The biggest cities in the world have a population over 1 million. Nearly half of those cities fall within the 1040 window. 60% of Earth's humanity lives inside a rectangle between the latitude lines of 10 and 40 degrees. Out of the 3.4 billion people in the 1040 window, 1% know Jesus. Less than one one-thousandth of a percent are Seventh-day Adventist. In the middle of the East North Africa region, there's one Adventist for every 65,000 people. There is one country that was evangelized as early as the 16th century. Portuguese Catholics converted huge numbers of indigenous people. But then, the natives grew weary of Portugal's growing power, their intolerance for other belief systems, and their involvement in the slave trade. Today, roughly 1% in the country's populace remains Christian, making it one of the least evangelized nations on the planet. Some suggest that consumerism and individualism are to blame. Others claim that this nation's postmodern worldview is simply at odds with Christianity. The postmodern worldview says truth is relative. A Christian who declares one God, one truth, and one way to heaven looks like a fool here. Does this description sound familiar? The statistics are for Japan. But the explanation could be true for numerous countries like Turkey, Netherlands, Sweden. And the 1040 window isn't the only place with bleak statistics. There is another country where only 7.5% of adults attend church. Over the past 20 years, church closures have risen to six per week. England has been called the most godless country in all of Europe. In the United States, the numbers of people who self-identify as Christians has dropped 1% every year for the last eight years. While about 70% claim Christianity, only 37% report going to church. Meanwhile, non-Christian religions are on the rise. Additionally, from 1990 to the present, the number of Americans who call themselves atheist, agnostic, or of no religious affiliation soared from 8% to almost a quarter of the nation, 16.1% around the 2007 midpoint. In the first century church, the Apostle Paul acted as a missionary to the Gentiles. A map of his travels proves that while undoubtedly very slow, Paul covered a lot of territory throughout the Mediterranean. While Italy and Greece carry lasting Christian legacies, Paul's work was geographically centered just a bit further east. 100 years ago, 20% of Turkey's population was Christian. Today, the 20% of Christians in Turkey have been reduced to two-tenths of a percent. Paul had the disadvantage of traveling entirely by boat or on foot. We have no such excuse. At the end of 2013, there were only 109 registered members in Turkey's two Adventist churches. The population of Turkey is approximately 75 million, even in countries where we are the strongest. Where we brag that one in 10 people in that country are Adventist, that is not success. That means that 90% of the people in that country have not been reached with the three angels' message. Perhaps it's time to examine this challenge from a new angle. You, the living, breathing body of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, have in your DNA a rich heritage. You have adapted, you have adjusted, you have carried the mission. But our world is changing, and the majority of the world's population has poured out of rural regions into urban centers. This has created megacities with populations in the millions, and it's changed the DNA of how we fulfill our mission. Our traditional methods to reach the masses have lost efficacy. Like our pioneers, it's time that we adapt. We are not called to change our message, but our method. Ironically, the new angle we need may be a very old truth. It's not about countries, it's about people. Evangelism can be the natural byproduct of a loving relationship between two people. And authentic person-to-person -person missions can happen anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're called to the 1040 window or the door of your parents' house. Even business people and social media marketers know that the most trusted form of advertisement is word of mouth. People listen to those with whom they have a relationship. So we must build relationships and community with those outside our borders and beliefs, whether those are people of other faiths or no faith, or our very own children. We, the church, can apply this old truth in a new way. Each of the world's divisions has built aggressive strategies. Strategies like life hope centers, centers of influence, comprehensive health initiatives, 
and small groups. With God's help, we can and will reach the masses in these large urban centers.